So just do a, a you know a brief lecture um, just on this these databases and also on the link. Okay, in, in Visual Studio um, we use this link which is very similar to the standard SQL language, um, which is a um, uh, declarative language, meaning it's not a you know like your typical language just like Java or or, or of that sort, but it's just very similar to that as well you see well, we did a little bit on that of, um, last week when we did the query right query from something you select something out of that um, array you can use that to access arrays as well as structures and of course databases so um, the first thing is what is a database okay so you may have heard you know I'm using Microsoft Access I'm using uh, you know uh, Oracle SQL whatever it is right so a database is really just a, a, um, a collection of, of data and that is usually stored in a table, okay? And, and that's how it is. Like if you, the easiest example is like an Excel file. An Excel sheet, you see it's a table of rows and columns. Um, we did that with the array, with the, um, you know, the two-dimensional arrays, right? It's, it's a made of columns and rows and that's what a database is. Of course, there are other, you know, um, different types, but a database is just basically a collection of data um, and usually a table can store uh, different types of data in, in database like if you remember in the array uh, if it's a single or a multiple dimension of the array and visual basic they all have to be in the same type right but in databases you can have multiple types you can have strings um, objects numbers you can even have um, you know, uh, the videos and audios in there as well in, in binary format. So, uh, databases are the common symbols you see out there and uh, if you Google it or if you go to other places, if you see any demos or any um, uh, presentations, they'll put this cylindrical uh, object or symbol here. This is always represent representing a, uh, a database, okay? Whether it's web-based or any type of uh, console applications. And the flow <coughs> chart of, uh, here is an example of flow chart that deals with the database. You see something like this, a typical flow chart that um, would access uh, the database at a certain step of the way. Okay, this could be coming from a different database, right? You can have a different database down here for a certain, you know, uh, certain data type. I mean, for a collection of certain data. So. Or they go, both could be coming from the same database, depending on the size of your project, right? If it's a really large program, usually you build into multiple databases and uh, maybe multiple systems as well. Okay, so um, this is just to show you what it looks like in typical flowchart. And here's another one. Uh, you have, for example, three different databases or systems. Uh, I'll explain what those means. Well, I kept saying database and systems, they're different. So you can have one for your sales department, one for the headquarter HQ, and one for the maintenance, or one for you know um, marketing, one for wherever that is may be, right? So you can have multiple of those. You don't have to store in the same database. Um, again, that depends on the size of the data. If it's a really small company, if you own your own you know uh, business, you do some uh, you know uh, sites and you store data on your customers, you may have just one database to store all those records, right? But if you're a large company, like, you know, for example, Amazon, they have probably thousands of databases. Okay? And they can be spread all over the world. They don't have to be in the same place. They could be anywhere else. And, and that's the term cloud, right? You hear that in the cloud all the time. So when you put a, a document in a Google Doc or um, in Dropbox, it's stored somewhere in a database, somewhere in the cloud, okay? Um, just on a server somewhere. Um, so here is an example of a website diagram that is, um, again, you will see that just because they put like some type of circular um, diagram there just to show you that it has a circular cylindrical um, shape of a database. And so for example, on this one here, the front end is what the user sees on the screen, the browser, right? And then of course you log in to the component, to the site, and then this is the back end. Uh, again, only the back end have access to the database. And then, of course, um, you can interact with the site by going and forth between the front end and the back end, and so on. So, if you want to log into the site, the site will actually um, connect to the back end where it will connect.
connect to the database and then retrieve your information to authenticate you to get into the site, right? So this is a, a typical um, diagram for a website. Now here's the big picture. Okay, so database, if you look at this, um, you see the word database and then this, uh, this thing called DBMS. Okay, so a database is just a file. Uh, whereas if you have a DBMS, which stands for Database Management System, okay, that is a system, which is a, a server, pretty much, uh, that hosts your databases. Okay, so when you say, oh, I'm using Microsoft Access uh, database, really that is a system, okay, because the database is a file. I'm using Microsoft Word document, right? So in the center of your application uh, of this uh, picture here, you have the database, okay, which is the file name. It could be nations, or it could be, you know, students, uh, or um, you know, products database, and then that is embedded inside the operating system. So some of these databases are system dependent, right? And and then in the OS, then you have the DBMS that is actually managing the databases. Okay, so you have uh, well, Microsoft Access. It's a pretty tiny um, database system, so it manages all the uh, Access database files. Okay, so if you I go a little bit beyond that, the larger um, database systems are like Oracle. You hear that probably all the time, right? Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, you can hear, you hear, you know, MySQL, MySQL, um, MariaDB, and, and there are many others. Okay, that's a, that's a lot of them, all different kinds. And then outside of that is the users. Okay, so what the user, they interact with uh, um, database and then, uh, and so on. So then here's another example of like you have different departments and how they can interact with the database. So you have the users in different departments, different division, they have to access the database through some type of application, right? So usually either that a, uh, an application that is built into the, to the database itself or you can use a, um, you know, a visual basic application you can write uh, or a web-based application, it doesn't matter what kind it is. And then from there on, then the layers go uh, deeper into the actual database files. We have the actual data. And so within this database, you have just pretty much tables of data, right? And, and that's what database is pretty much made up of just a bunch of tables, okay? And then you have, again, these different terminologies here again, just to show you that the applications are such as those, um, you know, tax applications. Um, any point of sales where you go to like Walmart or Best Buy and they, they scan your products and, and then you make payments. That is an application that is also attached to a database somewhere. So when they you, when you bought something, you made that transaction, it will update the database so that you have one product less than before and so on. And then you have the DBMS. Okay, sometimes you hear also you see the RDBMS for relational. You have different types of database systems. The most common one is the RDBMS, the Relational Database Management Systems, which are the ones that you probably use all the time, uh, or most of the time, and most companies use that because the RDBMS um, is, is, is very uh, useful for um, related stuff, right? So when you store some records or some information in a database, you usually store things that are related. So if you store a database about a student, that you have, you know, students related to, you know, a, a class, related to a school, related to some type of courses, and it relates to instructors and so on. So you, they're all related somehow. So that's why it's called the relational uh, database. Okay, you also have the distributed type. Uh, these are different types of databases that are distributed across uh, many um, areas, which are, are, again, used by mostly just large companies. And you also have the object-oriented database systems. And there are many others as well. These are just three of the common ones. Um, so the most common nowadays is still the, the RDBMS. So most people want to talk about uh, databases, it's always referred to this RDBMS. Okay, so from here on, when I say database, it's really, I'm talking about RDBMS, okay? Uh, which is, um, you know, Oracle, MySQL, um, you know, Access, uh, and, and so on. And there are some <coughs> actually um, other databases that store big data. When you talk about big data, how do you store 
because uh, usually you know a database stores data in terms of text files, right? Um, just text, uh, text and numbers. Um, sometimes you can store binary in there. For example, you can store a, um, a word document inside the database itself, so it's an uh, it's an object or binary format. But you can't really store a lot of those in a um, the RDBMS uh, systems. That it was not intended to for that purpose. If you want to store like you know, like uh, uh, videos and audios, files, all those stuff, you need a different type of database. And that is the big data type, uh, which is also uh, a part of the object-oriented database. And so if you think about YouTube, right, Facebook, where do they store all these information, all these videos about, um, you, you, we're talking about millions of videos. And all those are actually stored in the database, okay, not on the actual file server, but inside the database because it's much more secure because you can encrypt the entire database so that um, you know the data are, are much safer than if you just leave it out in the web server somewhere as the, at its own file because those can be hacked into. Okay, so you, if you store that inside the database, then not only that, you can also retrieve it much faster. You can search for it um, and you can you know manipulate those data much better than if you were to save that on a folder drive, right, on the drive. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to do that way. Um, so that's uh, why it's saved into a, a big type of database. Okay, so you have like uh, it's almost like two or three uh, layers of security. You have the uh, server to secure that, and you have the database to secure that as well. And you also have the actual database content being encrypted. So you have like three or four layers of security there just to make sure that even though your database uh, file has been stolen, maybe chances are for the hackers to um, you know. Uh, hack it and to um, decrypt the data in there, it may maybe or may be impossible because how, again, depends on how, how, um, how much uh, security you put into that, right? So depending on the, the key you put in there. So uh, relational and then the type, I show you here the different types of RDBMS. These are probably the common ones. You have the Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, which is um, part of uh, Oracle now too because they bought they bought it, right? And, and MySQL is actually an open source, which means that people can actually use it, they can change the code and so on. But um, it just started to change that because, you know, Oracle owns it and then they kind of, because Oracle is a, um, just like Microsoft, right? They are proprietary stuff, so they want to control a little bit, so they did that a little bit, and then now it's no longer really an open source and um, open source community, so those people who actually invented Microsoft, MySQL they are moving away from that and build another one called MariaDB, okay, which is very similar to MySQL, okay, and of course access and and if you're in the um, IBM world, they use DB2 and so on, okay. So uh, just different types of systems. So here's just some example of files. Um, so a database have tables, okay. You have tables of records. Uh, a table is usually called also an entity uh, in terms of uh, database uh, terminologies. So an entity is usually some object or things. If you think about a sentence uh, in, in English would be the noun of that sentence. So the noun is the entity, is an object of something. So you have a table of you know, students, a right? table of uh, products, a table of sales. Okay? Uh, you, so usually you don't have like a table of um, run or action, right? It's a table of things, okay? And then um, it's usually a rectangular array of data, right? You have rows and columns. Um, it may not be equal size. You, you see that some, because you know, some, you might have like 10 columns and, and 10 rows, but uh, those rows may not have the, amount, the same amount of data in there. But usually it's, it's rectangular. And then this is just a, um, common way of naming your tables in the, in the uh, database. So we have TBL sales, TBL students, and so on, so you know that is a table, um, which, is, which is very similar to Visual Basic, right? If you remember the prefixes we use for our objects, okay? <coughs> so we have what's called a field, a record, and a cell. So a, a single column is called a field, okay? It's a field is is actually an attribute. Okay, it describes what that entity is. So if you think about, you know, a table of students, so that's the entity. 
Now, how do you describe the student? Well, you describe the student by its age, by its name, by its ID, and so on. So each column is called a field. And again, that's an attribute, which is the description of that student or that object. So that's like the adjective of that sentence, okay? And then we have a record. So a record is a single row of that table. So a record is like an instance of that table, a copy of that table, it, uh, uh, right? So we have an object. So if you think of a table as a template, like a blueprint to create something, then the one row of that table um, is one actual copy of that entire ob uh, um, template. Right, so you have one row, that's one object, one student, a second row is a second student, and so on. So each record is a instance of that table. Okay, it has the same copy uh, of, of fields, of attributes, but the data can be different, right? Because each object has different data, and this, therefore they are unique. If you think of each student, each student is unique. We all, how we all have, you know, similar um, uh, things, right, attributes. And then uh, if you go a little bit deeper into each of those cells, right, this is where the row and the column, they intersect, and then you have that cell, okay. That is where you have the actual data in that particular, uh, for that particular record or that particular object. Uh, will describe that particular uh, um, student, for example. If you want to know the student's age, student B's age, you will look at you know, maybe it's the second row, uh, the age could be in the third column, so when they, when they cross is what the cell is, and that is the actual data that would describe that object, right? So that singular uh, um, <coughs> uh, attribute will tell, um, will describe that object, okay? So we have field records and cells. And then we have something called primary keys, parent and child tables, and you have foreign keys, and so on. This is where um, you would tie two or more tables together, okay? And this is where we have the term relationship comes into play, right? Why they're related, how they're related, by connecting them together using either a key, a special key, that would um, connect them to, a, to, to two or three or four different tables, okay? Instead of having all these here in a single table, which is really big, you would um, break into smaller tables, and you can make one as a parent table, one as a child table, or you can have multiple child, uh, child tables, but they're all linked together through a special key. That's the only way to connect it, right? It's like a string or a piece of thread that can attach to the other tables. Um, and so we, we call the uh, the table that has what's called the primary key, right, is the, as the parent table, and the a key that has, I mean, table that has a foreign key that's a child table. So in this example here, if you look at these two tables here, we have this table here called, um, it doesn't have a name here, but uh, it has a name, artist, and then you have the CD number here, right? So the CD number here, this is what's called a primary key. So a primary key is a unique key. Okay, it's a unique key that is used to identify each record. You cannot have duplicate keys. Uh, in other words, you cannot have two of you in the same classroom, right? Uh, so that's only one of you in the classroom, in each classroom. Uh, so here, the first key is 01. Uh, this is, has its title of the album, and then, of course, the artist's name for that particular um, uh, there. You could have, you know, you could have multiple um, artists that belong to the same CD number, but so that's why this artist is not unique, right? It could be Shania Twain, uh, it could be another artist as well, as you can have multiple artists in there, so they don't have to be unique, but the CD number will make the entire record there unique. Okay, so this CD num is the primary key. Now this table here, if you notice, you don't have anything unique there, right? The CD num, uh, the title, and then the track. So these tracks are, you have some duplicates there. You have ones and twos and threes. Uh, in here as well, the song title is very likely that you will have duplicate song titles, right? You will have different albums, or even the album names that could be, could be similar, uh, but maybe sung by different artists. Okay, so uh, this is a child table. And in here you have another column called CD number, which is the same name as this. 
Now, and when you build databases, you don't have to have the same name. It doesn't matter if it's name, the name is the same or not. But it's common to have the names uh, to be different so that you can relate to the parent table. Okay, so in this example, we are um, attaching the uh, CD number, which is unique in this table, to a second table here, which is not which is no longer unique. Okay, so this is what's called a foreign key because it represents the actual key from the parent key table, which is the primary key. Okay, so when we have that type of relationship, we connect a second table to another table, and the other table that you're connecting to uh, is is the primary key. Then that is the parent table. Okay. And then the one that has the foreign key, which is really is a, um, a you know a link to the actual key from the other table, then that's the child table, and that is called the foreign key because it's foreign to it, right? It doesn't own it. It just basically borrows the numbers from there. Okay, so um, so this might be a little bit confusing, but um, later on, if you do take the database classes, you will you'll see that you'll get to build this type of tables here in in, in databases. And the reason why is because it's much easier to uh, search this way than if you were all to jumble all this thing into a large file, a, a large table. You see a lot of duplicates. And when that happens, it's not really efficient in terms of uh, in designing databases. So that's why you have a database can have, you know, one table to probably thousands of tables. Okay. If you, if you think about like a, you know, a big, big site like Amazon, think about their products, right? How they're related to, uh, different brand, uh, different categories, um, you know, different price range, different location, um, you know, different vendors, right? Who owns what uh, and from what? So you can see a lot of tables there, and you have to connect all these together, and it could be a, a huge challenge for uh, a database a designer or a DBA uh, administrator. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, if you look at here, for example, you have six tables. Right, they're all related, uh, well, except for this uh, order options here is not tied to them. So in this case, there is a very little chance or no chance of connecting anything here to these tables at all because there's no key, right? So if I, if I want to search for something like uh, show me uh, the sales tax rate for this zip code, you can't because there's no connection there. Right, you can't connect it, and sometimes you do this one because maybe because this one here, this table, the order options has nothing to do with all these uh, other tables. It's just some data you display to the uh, uh, screen, or just something that you can uh, use it right away, or maybe it's something that is um, fixed, right? So you don't have to connect it to others. But the other five tables you can see here are related. So um, the ones with the gold key here. Okay, and the table is what's called a primary key. It's an example of um, a SQL Server uh, layout, which I think also very similar to um, Microsoft Access because it's Microsoft product. If you were to look this inside Oracle, it may be a little bit different. So different databases have different design, but the the uh, layout will be very similar. You'll see the, a different key um, or different signature or different type of um, uh, symbol to show what the primary keys are. Okay, so here we have um, so each table has a unique uh, field. The customers is identified by the customer ID that makes it uh, unique for that customer, right? The rest could be duplicated. I could have the same customer names twice or, th or three times, but each of those can be identified by its ID. So you make it unique that way. Just like when you log into a site, you register um, to Amazon or to Facebook. You cannot have the same email address if it's only being claimed by somebody else, right? That's for unique identity. And then the invoices is exactly the same. So you have a, a unique invoice ID. You could have the same customer, um, you know, buying different stuff. So that's why all these are not uh, not unique, but the ID is. So the invoice ID should be unique because each each order has a single invoice, right? So make it unique. Uh, same thing down here for the state, right? State code. Uh, names are not unique because you could have different na uh, duplicate names um, and then you have the uh, list invoice line items here here you have two keys okay both of these will make one 
So in this case, um, what I go into deep into the database is that you can have multiple uh, fields to form a single, as a single, we'll call it the compound key, right? Compound, um, a unique key called, it's, it's still called the primary key, but it's, it's composed of two or three different fields together. So you tie those together, and you make it much more unique, okay? So that's another way. And then of course, it's the product code, okay? So they're all linked together. The, you see the, the key here, a single key, followed by the symbol here, looks, which looks like a, a, the infinity symbol. Okay, this is just mean the relationship between those two tables. So that means that if you look at this table of customers here, it has one key on this side, it has infinity on the other side. So when you read, when you read this is that these two tables here, they're related by one to many. That's what we says, one to many. What does that mean? It means that there's one customer um, that can be, um, well, it means like one, one invoice, right? Can only be linked to one customer, right? But one customer can have many invoices, right? You look, you look at it that way. So one invoice cannot have more than one customer if you want to have put the restriction that way. But a customer can have many invoices. So you can buy a lot of products, right? But each product or each, each uh, a bill is billed to a single customer, right? So, so that's, that's how, it's, um, how it's phrased. Same thing here. So for example, a customer, uh, one customer lives in a single state, assume that you cannot live in more than two states, right? And a state can have a lot of customers, right? So you have, again, one to many or you can call it many to one, it doesn't matter which way you say it. Okay, so a state has many customers with the infinity, and then the customer has only one state, or belong to, belongs to one state. So you just one key here. Okay, and sometimes you also, which is not shown here, you also have a one to one. So a key to a key. An example of that would be like, uh, if you have another table here, uh, you could have a third table here, I mean a sixth table here to link to the customer by a one to one, maybe based on their social security numbers, right? So each, each person, each customer has a unique social security number. You cannot have two. So that's a one-to-one -one relationship, right? And of course, you can also have many-to-many. -many. So you have one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, and also a many-to-many, -many, right? So uh, for example, you can have, um, an example would be like, a, um, I don't know, like a, a movie title or movie can be rented out by a lot of customers, right? If, it, like if you have many copies of the movies. Um, or like classes, like students in classes. Uh, you can take many classes and a class can have many students, right? Of the same student. So, so in, in that nature. Okay, so now we are getting to a little bit into the um, the uh, components of how databases uh, con are connected to a application. And this is an example of the ADO.net. This is a part of the Microsoft uh, products. Uh, in order for um, a, a database such as in you know, Access or uh, SQL Server, um, or, or you, if you use Oracle or something like that, you have to have some type of uh, a connector to connect to the uh, database and to the program because you know the program, the software program that you write does not speak its language, right? So it speaks, it has its own syntax, its own language, and so therefore, in order for them to work, you have to have a some type of translator in between. So it's like the middleman. Uh, so that's what the ADO.NET comes into play, or it's like the a, um, a data source that connects them. And Java has one as well. It's called the JDBC. Uh, Microsoft has the ADO. Um, there are others as well that will allow you to connect to their systems so that any program that you write, if you're using Visual Basic, you're using Java or PHP, it doesn't matter. If you want to connect to Microsoft products like SQL Server, you have to have uh, one of their uh, connectors, okay? And uh, you can, and those are made available by Microsoft, so you can download it and just use it. Uh, if you want to connect it to, uh, you know, Oracle, Oracle has its own. If you want to connect it to a different database, they have their own as well. Okay, so, so the connector is responsible for uh, communication and the connection between your, pro your program and the database. So it talks to each other. 
Uh, so in this example here, we have a, a components here. We have the actual database server on the right side here, which hosts the actual database itself, okay? Um, <clears throat> because that's on the database itself, you don't really like, um, when you write a program, you don't actually go into the actual database and, and do the work inside the database server. You, what you do is, is that you have a connection to the database server itself, and so you can uh, still manipulate the database uh, content outside of the server in your application. And, and, and so it would, basically what it does is that it will go into the database, pull the database content out through these connectors, and then on your side you have what's called a data set. Right, a set of data uh, of your table and then you now can uh, change those content. If you change something here, it's going to be passed back to the connected provider here and then it modifies the actual database and then in the vice versa. So you have this, this um, uh, connection going on. If you lose the connection, of course, then you lose that. that um, uh, uh, so you, you cannot you know, communicate with the server, you lose the database, um, the data. So um, back to the data set. So here we have the actual database. So for example, you have a X, Microsoft Access database called maybe like the one the book used nations, okay, or mega cities, right? Or, or whatever, or products, doesn't matter. Uh, inside, when you connect to the database, w what comes out of that is what's called a data, a data set. Okay, so here's a data set that contains some um, information about the tables. So that data set has all the records, all the tables that you can choose, you can pick from. Uh, when we do this later, you'll see that you can actually decide what uh, tables or tables you want to select, okay? And you can always select more than one tables and the data set. So here is an example of a table. You have the, um, again, the fields, right? Columns are fields, attributes. And then you have the rows, which is the instance of, a, of this table here. And again, those are called records, right? This object. And each of these um, boxes here are called cells, and they're the actual, the actual data itself that describe this, um, these objects here. Okay, so, <clears throat> and I, I will walk you through this, how we you know, connect to a database through um, in some Visual Studio, but I just wanna show you some of these uh, uh, figures here, it will look very identical to um, how we're going to do it, okay? So later on, we will connect it to the database, you'll see something like this as well. On the right side, again, that's just your Solution, Ex Solution Explorer. You'll see the new icons here now, again, back to the cylindrical icons, right, database. And then you can actually see the data itself if you would double-click that database file, and you will see that on the left column here, we have the data source, it, it will list all the tables, and then, of course, all their uh, field names also, column names, okay? You, you can see everything there. It's almost like if you go into the actual database itself. And from here on, you can also uh, update the data. You can open it, you can change the content, uh, you can modify it very quickly and then save it to the actual database okay? without going into the database itself, okay? Um, or because you can do that in Visual Studio. Other programs may not have that option. It's just in Visual Studio, you can. So we'll, we'll see that later. Um, and then when we pull some data out, uh, you can see that you can actually um, open it, you can see it, or you can grab it and put it into a data grid view. We uh, sample a little bit of that last week. We did the um, list box in the data grid view, okay? It's very commonly used for databases because it's table made of, of rows and columns. And then um, binding, Okay, the word binding here is just basically are connecting uh, a, a cell or a data grid view to um, a data set in your in, in the database. So they're bound together. So that means that um, the content or the data will actually connect it to that object and you can see the data there live on the, on the form right, when you run it. <clears throat> so, uh, for example, in the, some of these you can actually drag and drop. When you, when you open the table on the left side, you see the columns, uh, the table name, each of those fields here. You can build like a, in your form a, a text box, and then you know that text box could be the could be bound to let's just say you know the employee number. You build another text box, and that can be bound to the last name, the first name, and so on. So so you can just I think visually you can just drag it and then 
connected to that particular text field and it will be bounded. Uh, once that's done, then you can, so the data can uh, be pulled directly from the database to your text field uh, live. Okay, so without you having to write or oh, text field dot text equal to something, right? It would do that automatically for you. <clears throat> so here is the uh, the data grid view, and then uh, you w you can bind it to um, a data grid view like this. And then when it, when you bind it this way, then of course it automatically and magically um, uh, built this table for you. It will grab all the fields, the column names, all the data. Uh, will be coming directly from the database or the data set to populate this uh, grid view. And of course you can you can modify it, you can change it uh, as well, or you can also set it so that it's not editable. You can, you can that, uh, have that option as well. Okay, And you can even build a navigation in there as well. So you can, you know, uh, show record by record or show every 10th record or something. Uh, if you think of a, a like a web page of search Right, if you search something at Google, it gives you maybe a couple million million results, and at the bottom of that Google page you see one through twenty or something, and you go next and previous and so on, right? So you can build that navigation as well automatically in Visual Studio. If you have like a really large table and each ta each you know grid only shows a certain number of records. So you can you can build that in there automatically. <clears throat> okay, so back to this um, binding objects to the data set. Remember we saw the uh, um, image earlier, it looks very similar to this. We have the actual database, which is Microsoft Access or SQL Server, uh, that stores that database. And then we have a data set. In order for Visual Basic or other programs to connect or to um, access the data, you have to have this adapter. So in, in Visual Studio, it's called the table adapter object and you will see that in Visual Studio later when we do it. <coughs> that will um, connect, connect uh, the data set to the database itself and so your program itself will actually bind to the data set only. It does not talk directly to the database. Okay, It goes through this uh, uh, table adapter here and then from here on because they're connected you can communicate because from here to here is like they're speaking different language. right? So, so your program does not understand uh, the language between the, um, the adapter and the database. So in order to make that work, then uh, you would need that adapter and then your language or your program can understand it and then you can pass the data back and forth between the two. And so that's why you can have you know, Microsoft Access or uh, SQL Server that can work with any language because of this adapter is able to talk to them. Okay. So, data grid view control, we'll see that in a, in a bit. Um, and then once we add that data um, set to your program, and I'll show you again, we'll see something like this also. Um, this will automatically be created for us, so we don't have to do it manually. You could do it manually if you want to. Uh, but we'll do the visually um, the visual method. It's just s simpler. And um, um, <coughs> we'll do some examples. Again, this is just a data grid view, show an example of uh, a table with all the data. And handle error errors. Let's see. So here's another example I just mentioned earlier, right? So you could build a form that looks like this has a number, last name, state, zip code, and so on. Has four uh, fields and would match with your table, right? And so now, in order to match, to link these with this, you should basically drag the employee number and then drag it and drop it into the number here and it will, it will bind to that control. And the same thing with the last name. You drag that, put it into the last name box, it binds to that automatically. And then when you run it, you'll see the data populated automatically like this for you. And then you can, um, you know, uh, show the next pre previous record and the exit. It will it will automatically bind that for you, and for each record. Okay, so we can easily build a, a database like that in Visual Studio.
the uh, the move methods here is for building the navigation so for example here you see the previous and the next right previous and next so from that current record if you want to move through the previous record you need to you know um, bind this button to something like move uh, previous right so binding source that move previous will move to the previous record uh, if you bind it to the next it will move to the next record in sequential order and if you have another button just say move to the first or move to the last just bind that to those uh, method here and it will take you there okay <coughs> Um, okay, so the next thing is the query. Now, to get the data out of this table, you have to use a query. Okay, otherwise you can't get the data out of, out of it. And, and that's why you have SQL a language um, as well as the link. The link is very similar to SQL. Um, I don't know why they chose to use link, but they could have just used standard SQL. Uh, but they happen not to do that. So we have a, a new language um, in, in Visual, Visual Basic. And I think it's only in Visual Basic or maybe some of their Microsoft products, but this is, doesn't exist outside of, of the Visual Studio. So in other words, what you write in this language does not work on the actual regular database. Okay, it's an it's internal um, language. Um, but it will look very similar. So you have the um, where clause, if you have like, if we'll see the syntax in a minute, you have the where clause. The where clause here um, allows you to filter the data, right? So if you just say, show me um, a student in the student table with ID of five, okay? So how do you do that? And that's where the where clause comes into play. So you can say, select, uh, select student name or student ID or student whatever it is from this table, but I only want the ID matches five. So you could say where ID equals five. That's a where because of where clause. Okay. If you don't use the filter, then it's gonna pull every student out of the table, right? Um, you can have multiple. You can say where student ID is score five, and you know age is greater than twenty five, and and so or and so on, right. You have a, a combo um, condition right there too. And the order is for assorting purposes. Okay, it's another statement. Um, you can order the results if you will select, let's just say, all the students from uh, this class who are male, and then sort them by their last name in order or a descending order. You can choose either way. Okay, so that's another option there. If you don't sort it, if you don't do it, then it will automatically keep it, whatever it is, stored in the database table. Whatever it is in that order, it will come out that way. Okay. Um, and, and of course, you can you can always uh, sort it. If you don't really care about that, then that's okay too. So here is the uh, the syntax for that. Okay, uh, anywhere we see like in in bold black font here, those are required, right? Uh, or keywords, keywords in in the uh, in Visual Studio. Um, <clears throat> anything you see here in square brackets are optional. That means they're not required. You don't have to do it. You don't have to use it. So you could just say dim. And the variable name usually we use the word query. Okay, you can call it something. That's fine. Just just an object name. Equal, and then the word from that's required, and then a variable name, element name that you can use as a placeholder to reach into the table and grab those content, those data. Right, so you use that uh, as a as like an accessor uh, to the table itself. So when you get the data, when you access the data in, in the table. You would reference it through this object or through this name here, whatever you call it here. Okay, so in the data set dot table. This is again the required uh, um, setup. So you would have something like employee data set dot table employee. Okay, so you actually connect to a table. You cannot connect to multiple tables here. You have to do one table at a time. Um, because, you know, employee. Um, you know, doesn't belong to, you don't have the employee inside the table and then the sales and the customers, right? You only have one at a time. You can do what's called a join, which is something beyond uh, the scope of this, of this class. You could join multiple tables together, but for now, just one object per table. So in this example, I want to get the records. Again, we, this, this example use records. 
um, you can call it query again doesn't matter right uh, so we say from the employee inside this employees data set okay again this data set is actually a object that is um, connected to each table inside that database okay you have if you have one table it doesn't matter if you have ten table it doesn't matter you have to specify the table name otherwise uh, it doesn't work okay so this one here now employee is accessing the actual table called TBL employee and then return I just want the employee which is this object here okay in that employee will um, have access to all the data inside this table called employee okay and in this way you have everything will be, will be pulled from that table and that particular order and everything in there right? including um, whatever how many fields you have in there including some uh, you know hidden fields <clears throat> if you want to filter that out that you would do like for example here I want to sort this result by the code so in that table for example has a code um, uh, a field in there so you can sort it by the code so everything sorted and the third example here you are not sorting it but you want to grab only the employee that has a status of P maybe for part-time okay so in that case it will look into the table employee look for all the employees it's, it's gonna look at the status uh, field and it's gonna grab only all the employees that have a status of P and then pull all those out now when you want to display it you have to select something to display okay if you don't select something uh, it does not know as you can see here the select is required okay you have to select something either the element name here or uh, something else uh, later on if you will see we'll, we'll, you can actually create different element in there as well like the let using the let something let um, x equal to something that you can select those uh, instead of the employee in this case okay so whatever you put inside the select after the select statements here will be pulled out and you can access those data okay so um, <clears throat> that's where the work clock comes in and this is we have both of those right select all the employees from the employees table uh, whose last name uh, starts with J okay the like here means J like okay like looks like that pattern right so the first character has to be a J and then after that the star means it's a wild card it could be John it could be Jerry it could be Jim it could be Jake uh, it could be anything that's start with J okay it will grab all of those names all those employees that's the entire record there okay everything every every uh, column in there and and then I want the list to be sorted uh, by the code but I want it to come in uh, the descending order okay if you don't supply descending or ascending it's defaulted to ascending order so if you for example up here we have the order by employee.code we didn't say ascending or descending it's automatically set to ascending order okay so that's a default so you don't have to um, explicitly say ascending uh, it, it would does it uh, would do automatically for you uh, so just again some rules um, is where these come into play so the order has to come before I mean after the where clause you cannot switch those around so this is the syntax here right you can have the uh, from after that you have the where and then the order by and then the select okay you cannot have you can switch you cannot switch this around it won't work okay uh, again that's just the rules um, and the order by you can order you can you know um, sort by many uh, many fields you don't have to say just one I could say first sort the employee code descending after that sort the uh, sort the last name uh, ascending after that sort the uh, salary ascending and so on right so it will sort that first so the first thing it will sort the, the code it goes to the next column and then sort the last name and then go to the next column sort the uh, uh, the radio or the pay right so you have a, a different uh, result whereas if you just sort one column okay so you can sort multiple columns <clears throat> okay 
Um, there are also some aggregate operators. Uh, these are built-in uh, functions that is part of the link uh, language. It is also very common in the uh, SQL language as well. You have things like the average, the count, the maximum, the minimum, and the sum. These are only usually um, useful for numbers, right? Uh, I mean, you wouldn't get the sum of people's names. You probably won't get that. But the sum of some numbers, like uh, integers uh, or, or double digits, uh, double numbers, yeah, you can use that. So average is also okay. Um, the count, it just tells you how many records you have in that entire table. And the maximum, it gives you the highest number uh, in that table. And the minimum, just the smallest number. Okay, so um, those are really quick ways of how you can use to aggregate data. If you want to use those in the uh, query, then you have to use it before, again, the word class. Okay? Um, and again, uh, this is, um, I'm just showing you here, we're not going to do it in, in here, but um, if you were to do with that, you can put it in here like this. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, so if you want to, for example, want to know the average, Okay, the average of um, something in this table called employee, if you want to know their, their rate or their pay rate or the salaries, right? Then you're returning, so when you select return, it's going to come back as a number. So when you do that, you have to specify the data type here, just like you uh, declare a, um, a variable name, right? The average rate uh, as a double type, and then you put the aggregate here, Notice that you no longer use the word from. Okay, you cannot use aggregate and from together. So the from is just to select the actual data from the table. If you use aggregate, then you're expecting some type of number return. Okay, because all it does is returning a, an average uh, total or sum or the maximum number or the minimum and so on. The total count, right? Those are data type. Whereas the from, you know, there's no data type. It's a, it's a, it's really an object type. Okay, so you don't, you don't specify the data type here, because you have, you know, different columns, and different columns have different data type. Right? You can have names as a string. You can have uh, age as a number, and then you have like, um, you know, uh, image as in a binary, a binary object. So you can have different types. So therefore, you don't specify here. Actually, you can't. It won't let you specify there. If you specify it, then you have to use the aggregator because that's what it's for. You get some type of number. So if you want to get the total rate from that uh, table for all the employees, you can say aggregate employees same, look very similar. The difference is just the word aggregate here. Okay, before this is from employee in the employee that I said that table employee. And then select what? Select all the employee rate and then into average. Okay, so into average here. Uh, this is the aggregator. So you can say into max, right here, get the maximum, the highest rate here, the minimum, we just put into min, and then you put the paren here, that's the function that would uh, uh, get or pull the smallest number, and then um, it will, it will re return and then assign that to the max rate or the min rate or the average rate. So we just get one data out, okay, uh, for that. If you want to do a count, then you would just say again into count. So this is the syntax. So aggregate a placeholder in that table. You need that to access the table. And then the where class, even you don't have to use where if you don't want to, right? Because here, you don't care about where. If you care about where, then you say, I want a total rate uh, for all, let's just say, female employees. Then that's a where class, right? So you would say aggregate um, employee and employee table where um, employee dot gender is uh, F or female and then select the rate into the average so you get their females average rate okay and do the same with the male and or a part-time full-time right so and so on and then you can sort it make it nicer and so on if you don't sort it you can still sort it afterwards right if you put it into a, a list box or um, data grid you can still sort it after that as fine too so either way Okay, um, so that's database. 
any questions on what we just went through the last 20 minutes? Okay.